This is our COVID roundup and CDC update for October 11th, 2024. Starting off, there might be somebody on the CDC that actually follows me because my two issues got resolved. XEC was moved away from under the JN1 umbrella back to under the KP3 umbrella, which demonstrates that it's moving farther and farther away from JN1. The one downside is that there's no indication on this chart that it's a recombinant lineage between a flirt and a fluke variant or a sluke variant. And also they started adding the MC clade on this, which are all descendants of KP3.1.1. And it looks like our winter wave is going to be a competition between these MC variants and the XCC variant, which is a big shame because Verb Pack had the option to select KP3 as the targeted variant for the COVID vaccine, and they specifically chose not to do this, making this another great time to light a fire under their ass so they actually do their jobs and chase variants because they should be because people are actually doing it and they are doing it very well. Where again, the FDA even brought up and targeted KP3 as a variant of interest to target for the vaccines, and the Verb Pack Committee specifically chose not to do this. My next complaint from last week is that there is no unity between the different NWSS dashboards. So the first one is from the COVID dashboard page. You click on this link right here to navigate to it, where last week this one was reporting at high, and the respiratory illness dashboard was reporting at moderate, and then the other dashboard on the NWSS page was reporting moderate. At least now there's unity between all three of the different pages, where this one is reporting as low, the NWSS dashboard is reporting at low, and the respiratory illness dashboard is reporting at low. However, again, I have to point out that the viral activity score is a terrible, terrible measure that the CDC came up with to compensate for the lack of unity within all of their sites. Instead of having a standardized method of data collection and data standardization between facilities, where every facility is collecting data the same way and then processing it the same way, they decided to let everyone do everything differently, and then they're going to do a post hoc analysis to try and correct for everything to make it all the same, which literally can't be done because each site is doing things differently. And worse still, they get to monkey with the numbers to make it look like it's low levels of COVID in the wastewater right now when it's not. For instance, here's the wastewater scan data from 2021 to present time, where you can see that this is the levels that we're at right now. And if we cross a line straight across this graph, we see that for the first entire half of the pandemic, we're at higher levels with our low than the highest peaks of the first four waves. If you ask me, those are not low levels of COVID in the wastewater. But this is what the CDC is determining as, quote unquote, low levels. Making it very important to understand that COVID is not low right now. It's actually very high. You can see that we're still higher than the peak of last summer's wave. Moving on to New York State's COVID wastewater surveillance map before I finish up on wastewater scan. The first thing I want to note is that we're very consistently having no reporting data between 12 to 20 sites after we had already lost about 33 wastewater reporting sites, meaning that we're likely to see another wastewater surveillance drop in New York State within the near future. But for the wastewater facilities that are reporting, we have a drop of those at the highest levels. So as a reminder, anything that is dark blue is low levels of COVID in the wastewater, anything that is light blue is moderate levels, and anything from yellow to bright red is high levels of COVID in the wastewater. Since last week, it's dropped from about 64% reporting at the highest levels down to about 54%. And moving on to wastewater scan in the 28 reporting wastewater facilities to California, we are clearly seeing an increase in the wastewater signal once more making me more confident that my call of the start of the winter wave last week is correct. And when we look to the 148 reporting wastewater facilities to wastewater scan, we see a similar thing where we see a signal increase right here. And then looping all the way back around, what variants will be leading this winter wave? We have our well-known KP3.1.1, which has been leading in variants by proportion for a while now. However, it appears that that variant is starting to slow down. XEC has been growing incredibly quickly. Last reporting period, it was making up about 6% of all variants of proportion, and now it's closer to 11%, so it nearly doubled. And then we have our first of the MC clade on the board, MC1, which is already starting off strong at about 3.6% of all variants of proportion. But we also know that there's about four other of the MC clade that are pretty strong in the wastewater. So next reporting period, we're very likely to see a lot of these on the board making the likely competition between this MC clade and then XEC as KP3.1.1 ebbs out. And in terms of the CDC's COVID genetic surveillance program, the data is still quite harrowing, where we have vast sections of our program not reporting at all for over a month now.